blinded by belief. Believe. This is one of the control system's greatest um, weapons to control the human psyche. Get them to believe something. They don't care if it's this religion or that religion or this political belief or whatever it is. As long as you believe something powerfully, then they got you. Because belief builds walls around itself, uh, repels all borders that challenge that belief, and suddenly you're living your life on a postage stamp or a dot. And your true ability to perceive um, in an expanded way is gone. You've given it up to the belief. This is how it must be. And once you have a belief, like a religious belief, then there are rules and regulations. Walls go around the belief. Uh, if you're going to be one of us, you must believe this. You can't believe that because they believe that. So you'll be one of them if you believe that and all the rest of it. Here we go. We're all possibility. What are we doing having rigid beliefs when we're all possibility? Religion is mind. And there are many expressions of religion, not just going to church. There are many religions of the mind of various kinds that don't appear to be, but they are addictions of the mind. It's mind. You must believe this. There is one possibility. What's that saying? There is one possibility. That's how mind thinks. Consciousness, there is one possibility. You're having a laugh, darling. So religion, as we know it, is not going to survive this epoch change either because it's an expression of the last one. These are, these are people in a hypnotist stage show who've been told that they are religious believers. There's so many religious believers who are like that. There's so many prisons of the mind, religious belief, racial belief. I'm in a different spacesuit to you, so I'm better than I am in you all. It's like being two spacemen on the moon and they're having a bloody argument because the, what, the space suit is that color and that space suit is that color and that was made here and that was made there. Mine's superior to yours. It's, it's childish, child's play. And, it, and by the way, it's not just white people who are racist. It's a mentality that can manifest through any race. And we have racism all over the world. It's, it's not a racial uh, belief, racism, it is a mental mind state. And anyone that thinks they're superior to anyone else because of their body computer st state or color or whatever is controlled completely by mind and ignorance, political belief, um, self-identity belief, I am Joe Public, I am little me, all these things will go and have to go if we're going to open up to the truth vibrations because they are all about limitation, all about um, little me. And as um, researchers have shown, when we have rigid beliefs, the brain fires off the neurons in a specific um, network. And what that does is filter reality, decode reality, in line with the way those neurons are firing. Therefore, it continually edits its reality and creates self-fulfilling prophecies, if you like, that it keeps seeing the world according to its belief, despite receiving information that challenges the belief, it just filters that information in line to protect its belief. And then when you change your belief system, as has been shown in research, the neurons start firing in a different way, and you start seeing the world in a different way. If we can get to a point where we open our minds without belief, we come from a state of knowing, all-knowing, uh, consciousness rather than belief from mind, then we open up the, the range of perception and understanding and awareness well beyond anything you can access if your uh, brain is firing off in this symbolic way, um, limited by rigid belief, whatever belief that may be. When we open our mind to consciousness, everything changes. And to do that, I would suggest we need a blank sheet of paper. 
you know, it's not about learning anything new. We're all knowing if we can access that, access that level of ourselves. It's unlearning the programming that has kept us from that level of awareness that we truly are. And therefore, because we're dealing with all possibility at the core of our being, that's what we are, we need a blank sheet of paper. All preconceived idea needs to go. All preconceived belief needs to go and let information, intuitive knowing, decide what we think about things and feel about things rather than preconceived idea. It's not possible becomes, well, let's see if it's possible on the basis of the evidence, the basis of the information, the basis of how I feel. And then suddenly we're not saying, no, that's possible, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut that out by reflex action. We're gonna look at it. And when you do look at it, as I know from experience, it, what seems to be crazy to start with starts to take on um, very profound dimensions because we're all possibility and if we're saying only this is possible only that's possible that's not possible we know we're not operating at the core of our being which is all possibility we are editing things we are limiting ourselves we are entering the realm of mind and it's a time to choose in many ways between the head the intellect not that he doesn't have the part to play it does it being the governor and the heart, knowing, intuition. What changed my life more than anything else was 20 years ago when I decided that if I uh, was ever had a decision between going with my intuitive knowing, which we feel here, funnily enough, in the kind of heart chakra area, and my mind, I was going to go with my head, I was going to go with my intuition. And it changed my life and has allowed me to follow this path because I can tell you over the last 20 years, there have been many times in the early days, not for a long time, but in the early days when my head was going, you're going to say what? You're going to do what? You must be joking. And not, not, not in my lifetime. But I thought, no, I feel to do it. I feel to do it. And I went with it. And as a result, you, you follow this, um, uh, this energetic path through intuitive knowing that, that has been laid out. And what happens because intuition, knowing, is coming from another level of awareness beyond five sense reality, it means that to five sense reality, general world, some of the things you do when you follow your intuition um, are seen as, oh, I think I'm a, possibly an example of this, are seen as crazy and mad and lunatic and dangerous and all that stuff. And, and what happens then when you, when you do that and you get that reaction is that the, the head kicks in, the mind, which wants to protect its preeminence that it's had up to this point, puts its, uh, puts its arms together and says, see, see what happens when you don't, you, don't, you don't listen to me, see, see? See the trouble you've got into? And, and it's like, yeah, uh, uh, okay, and you come back into mind. But if you stick with it, and you take what, 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 what comes as a result of expressing your uniqueness and expressing your, your um, intuitive knowing, then eventually things happen, good things, great things sometimes, that happen not despite what you did and the reaction you got, but because of it. And then the mind, the intellect, looks at this and says, well, hold on a second. It might get you into trouble, but eventually it works out. And what happens then is your head and your heart, your knowing, your, your intuition come together. And the war stops. We become whole again, where mind serves consciousness instead of serving itself. And it's years and years, I say this honestly, since my intuition and my head have had a problem. Uh, and and it, it's an incredible feeling because it's like, when you start out, it's like, I feel to do this. You're not doing that. You're not, you, no. And then after a while, when this sync takes place, it's like, I feel to do this. And the head goes, okay. Um, and it's a totally different way of inter interacting with the world. The war stops. And this is, this is open to all of us. But the first thing is, is what it is. It's to face the situation we're in, and then we can do something about it. First thing, to realize that up to this point, we have been slaves thinking we were free. And so the first stage is to acknowledge that, and when we do, we can do something about it because we're accepting what the situation is. The second thing 
is to choose freedom over slavery and be prepared to do what is necessary to achieve that freedom over slavery. And when we do that and we mean it, there is a shift in our energy field. As that shift takes place, what this, what I call magnetic uh, attraction, it's uh, the energy field is, uh, uh, of the human body is an expression vibrationally of our state of being, mentally, emotionally, what we might call spiritually. And therefore, our state goes out as a vibrational uh, field and it draws in other vibrational fields that sync with it. We call these people, places, locations, ways of life, jobs, opportunities or lack of them. So when this shift takes place, because we've said my intent, both powerful intent, is that I want freedom and I want to end the, my life, I'm not going to be a slave anymore, I'll do what is necessary to understand who am I, where am I, suddenly this energy field shift takes place and we start drawing in new people, places, locations, opportunities, etc., that are sinking with the new uh, vibrational state as opposed to the old one. And at this point, and I experienced this big time in the public eye, you, we experience this shift as our lives falling apart. Partnerships may, may end, we may lose our job, we may change location, we may, like me, un, un, undergo massive um, ridicule. But what, if we understand what's happening, the old energy field, the old you, the old intent, the old awareness was pulling in the old life, and then when it shifts, it's pulling in a very different expression of the new uh, vibrational self. And that transitional period, when the, the shift takes place, the old life falls apart. But if you want to change your life, then the old life has to fall apart unless it serves the new one. So when we choose freedom, the transformation can be challenging. It's easier now because more and more people are going through it and we're beginning to understand the process. I felt like this so many times. I went to the top of a hill in the south of England, the west of England, one day, because I didn't want to upset anybody. I went to the top of this hill in the middle of nowhere and I screamed my frustration out. I know what this image means and so many other people do. But it was the old life breaking down so the new one can take over. It's time to know thyself. Not thyself that we've been told we are, but thyself which we really are. This self, everything from the beginning, my birth, my ancestors, my children, my wife, everything comes together simultaneously. I saw everything about me, about everyone who was around me. I saw everything they were thinking now, what they thought then, what was happening before, what was happening now. There is no time, there is no sequence of events, no such thing as limitation of distance, of period of time, of place. I could be anywhere I wanted to simultaneously. That's who we are. And that's what the control system has tried to keep from us. Now, the way to go most powerfully with this change is to stop identifying who we are with what we are told we are, little me. To stop looking in the mirror and thinking, that reflection is me, it's all I am. And looking at ourselves on the microscope, that's who I am. And bringing our point of observation from I am David Icke, a personality born in Leicester, England in 1952 to I am infinite consciousness. All that is, has been, and ever will be, can be, all possibility. Infinite love, having an experience through this lens into this reality that they call David Icke. And again, once we take this observation from that observation, there is a fantastic shift in our energy field. And we break up these densities that are holding us in mental and emotional servitude. Everything starts to change when we move our sense of self-identity. That's why the control system wants us in there. It can't cope with this. We have to be in there. Little me. 
And this is the fork in the road. Are we going to live our lives as consciousness or mind, as all that is or little me? Because that will decide the kind of world we're going to live in.